My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and uh, we're going to crack on with this. So, there's a lot of people. I'll, I'll just quickly get away with it, get over the mourners. Yes, it isn't finished. It, this is the whole point, right? This is an educational, entertaining series of videos. Uh, yes, we're going to build this. That's why I'm building this fucking workshop. Not entirely just that, but yeah, this is a reason. Um, anyway, let's just get into the meat of it. Fuck the mourners and the whingers. Right, so a few people said a few things. Um, so let's just go through some of the changes and so on. The whole point is that this is a series of changes. You know what I mean? It's um, like stuff like this. It looked like that with this ribbon. Oh, uh, no, don't like that. And then it went to this you know, without the ribbon, and so on and so forth. There's a reason I'm doing this, and it's one, because the fucking hell of it. Number two is to show you aspects of design. Number three is to show you other aspects of design, right? There are a lot of people who say stuff like, oh, I'd much rather have a practical approach where you just build it and see what happens. But the problem with that is, is that winging it gets you nowhere right there are lots of wonderful stories of stuff like the comet a plane that decided to basically be a comet and you know crash down to earth um there are f1 teams like lotus and stuff like that who were um trying to build engines and they'd blow themselves up and they were just winging it yeah there's no design been put in um, no analysis beforehand the reason why things are so much better now you know in the 50s 50s 60s 70s uh, things started to change in the 80s 90s they really started to change and then 2000s and, and onwards that was it so if you look at bikes from the 70s to the 80s there were improvements but it's not great right then all of a sudden these things happened. And people might say, oh, well, that's because of fuel injection. Oh, that's because of whatever. But yes, how did these things happen? Fuel injection is as old as the hills. All of these technologies aren't brand new technologies. What happened was, is manufacturing got better and design got better. And the reason why those got better is because of this, right? Because we can test these things. Now, you can, manuf you can do this by... <laughs> you can do this numerically and work this out but you will spend the next two years working this out and then verifying that you haven't made a mistake with your mathematics because no one else has done it yet right and uh, this took me fuck all to do right you can make iterations you can make changes without even building anything yet and that's the whole point so with that in mind that's what this is about yes it's not finished and yes things will change uh just like now where i've changed how this is um operated when i turn this now it doesn't go past the wall look like that it touches the wall <laughs> but it doesn't go past it yet there's iteration iterations and there's changes to be made i'll show you some of them here's a mod that i was going to do i fucked around with this idea didn't like it um, I'm sure I did some other ones. I was... Uh, this is the curved wall, you see. I looked at the path and the motion of how it moved, and there's this giant gap. So I put this wall in, so you can see there's been a change here. Look, there's, there's these bumps. You know what I mean? Uh, oh, one thing I did want to go through, which was um, what people said, why the ports on this side wall here uh, on this back wall and not here on the sides like a wankle i'll show you why it's something very specific to this engine um so i did a mock-up just to show you again you just go through this is an excellent example actually of an iteration a change right so just by doing that right this is basically a progression line i can do that right so that's what it was like and then what I've done is is I've put this wall in. Booyah, like that. With a port, it's straight, whatever. Why the fucking hell is it this here and this down here? Well, it has to be. And it has to be because of the way that this, this motion works. 
so let's go back up to here we're coming down like this we open the exhaust port here on the right beautiful then we're open our inlet port just now right so we've had our blowdown event we're open this port and this could be a bit high because this is the seal you see this here with there we're opening up and now we've opened up fully we're looking at this port down here but we're blocked we're blocked off this is fuck all it's gonna shoot up it, it's not very good not only that is as soon as we rock we've basically blanked it off right that's shit there's a shit reason to have a port there look how much transfer we have we open the port see we can't have it up here because if it was up here on this wall level with this it'd be open fuck me when would it open by it would open there right it would open it there at the transfer well before we've even opened the exhaust so you get combustion gas is just fucking off into your intake right so that's why having this port at the side is a bad idea so what we do is don't get rid of it though because we might want to do something like with that right that might be a, an iteration change so all i'm going to do is just put it to side one minute there we go get rid of it but keep it because i have done this in the past where you spend ages doing something then you go oh hang about that gives me another idea because you could do something else with it you know what i mean like a boost pot for something else like what who cares and who knows at the moment right you know this is all open to change um there is a clearance between this side wall and this side that's not a good dimension it's a millimeter between there and there right in there and when it all heats up we're going to go through that next i'll show you some of the thermal expansion stuff next but um uh, yeah so we've got this bump that isn't perfect and i'll show you that if we look actually now i've got the motion study right play through that if you look you can see uh, let me get square on there right that it misses it and then there's this big gap it follows it then there's a gap it's because of the motion it's because of the angles and that might have something to do with the width between the seals the length of the rod and the stroke there might be a relationship there i have to do some graphs and do some plotting mathematically to find out what the optimum shape is it gets very close there as well which i don't like maybe it's nipping in too much all this curve needs to be changed you know what i mean the way i did this i did this very crudely where basically i got iterations of this moving so uh this one where i basically just stenciled over all of the motions in a sense like this you see and you can see there's a curve there you know there's a curve here so i put that curve in started messing around with it and got to where i am now but like with everything it's an iteration change you know what i mean you do little things to change things now everyone was saying about i don't understand how the porting works like i say this is an entertainment and educational video series all will become clear as i go through just one thing at a time you know what I mean? Um, but one thing to be certain is my original intention, if I can show you it, that's a good example there. My original intention, oh fucking hell, was to have this cut out. You see, the, that's not a good example at all. You got a better example? There. So I had this relief here cut out to make it thinner, lighter, and so on. Well, I've been that because what I was trying to do uh oh no go back there we go what i was trying to do and this is what i do do most of this is not done on the computer most of this is done in a book like this right where i'm working out ports where i'm doing all the these are options for where the injectors could go blah 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 and what i did was is i photocopied not photocopied i made copies of this so it's tdc 90 180 270 and then what i did was is I then draw, I draw on it, you know what I mean? And that's why there's two, so I'm, I've got more drawing room. You know, don't waste the paper. Uh, and I'm drawing it, and we can see that this transfers in here, then it's blocked off, then it's the connect above the line, and then there's still a trap there. If we put a seal 
down here like this right I was trying to think of a way so this is the original at the bottom they're connected they're connected they're connected at the top now above the piston they're connected all the time if I use where this red line is then they're connected here and we'll get to what that's about later um, they're not connected there they're connected above in the cylinder if you want to call it that and then they're, they're not they're connected there but it's inside this void and I'll get to what that's for later on I was trying to do something else with this original bottom one but it didn't work out we'll get to all of that but you do this thing where you've got this stage pumping it'll all become clear there's loads of asterisks and fucking stuff yes and there's these P's and V's and I'll get to all that and I'll get to all this shit later on but the new iteration now is the fact that it is just a what two dimensional solid piece right there's going to be a seal across the top a combustion seal but this face is going to stay like that and it's very much like a two stroke right people think there's a difference between um, resonance engines or reed engines and piston ported all two strokes uh, as far as motorbikes go a piston ported two strokes right the piston does block off the ports from communicating to each other and but it doesn't do it perfectly right it doesn't seal perfectly it's just doing it that rapidly and the leak is so small it's a bit like a um a root blower or any kind of supercharger actually or any kind of turbo turbos and superchargers are not sealed systems the impeller has a gap of clearance between it and the housing just like um, roots blowers just like screws they all have leakage but you are shifting the vast majority of the gases pattern roots blowers they really start to shit the bed at higher rpm um, but they all leak right pistons have gap piston rings have gaps in them everything leaks it's just that if you get the vast vast majority right um, the vast vast majority of your gas is pumping around and you do it so quick you know what I mean mass flow rates is the mass of the air flowing out of something over time and that's why it's called a rate and if your mass flow rates you're losing fuck all mass because it's such a tiny time then all is good um, the next thing we're going to get into if we go to the motion job in just let it play through is uh, balancing right people are saying this thing's gonna kill itself I, well actually no it's the opposite to that uh, one thing people did mention was the piston rings if you look what the piston rings do or the rings these edge seals they basically just behave like piston rings piston rings do just go up and down which these do this is unlike a wankel wankels have they load on one side because it's spinning around in one direction um, and they basically tailor those seals just to accept those forces side load from one side this is a bit different but piston rings do this right piston rings actually have a lot to contend with we'll get through that that'll be its own separate video the balance on this thing because it's not because there's not a, a pure reciprocating moment on all of this uh, is actually easier to balance and it's just what you call um, destructive interference of sine waves we'll get to all of that that's uh, and I want to build a little um, I'm gonna 3d print some weights and some electric motors and show you how this behaves versus a, a, a piston engine um, but yeah this this is this is actually quite beneficial um, but this all comes down to the question of a few people saying why why do this well one it's good fun two it shows um, how the pro how you work out this process when I build the prototype for this it's not gonna be the only one fuck me we'll blow something up or whatever and that failure isn't it oh fuck you know that's it it's a uh, right that's broken let's move on let's try it. how do we solve the problem blah blah blah, blah. you know what I mean there are some people who are kind of the new age of thinking that things just miraculously appear right working and if anything breaks well whoever whoever designed that should be fired doesn't work that way regardless um, yes yeah, so why why build this thing well number one is it does things that other two-stroke designs either can't do or fail badly at right um, so the asymmetric porting is just a fucking beautiful right so when we have this where we open the exhaust pot first that's standard two-stroke business we then open the, the the 
these transfer pot intake, right? You open the intake, great, right? This is all bog standard stuff. It then goes down to bottom dead centre, comes back up. This, this is gold, right? It shuts off the exhaust and we've still got half, pretty much, half an intake port open, right? If we use, we fuck around with resonance kind of thing, like with a two-stroke normal with a resonance exhaust, right? Uh, and we'll see the benefits of doing and not doing that. I still don't know what it is. We're gonna have, that's why you do testing. We use pressure at this point to basically stop the intake fucking off out. We're basically making like a force field in a sense with pressure. If we get the pulse right to arrive at about this time, you know, we, we build up a gradient. Then this stuff that's coming in stops fucking off out this out of the cylinder and fills this chamber. You know what I mean? If you look, we've got most of it left. And then when we get here, this is beautiful because we have half a port pretty much and we just fill the fucker up. And we can manipulate things to make sure that this re is really effective. And I'll, I'll get to that one of these days. <laughs> I can't, not next video, probably the video or the video after. You'll see. And it just means I've got to make this giant model on SolidWorks to, to, to demonstrate it clearly right that's the first thing the second thing is there's one thing that two strokes love to do right and it's rev right they love revving because of simplicity right we haven't got all these you know what i mean valves if you've got a combustion stroke uh, a, a power stroke every rev then we need to optimize that which means revving the nuts off it and one of the problems with two strokes is that they don't go very uh because of the piston porting malarkey they don't go really um over square right they just don't do that where with this we can go quite rapidly over square and again i'll show you how, what that means so one of the major benefits i was looking online and i found i was trying to find out how much two stroke pistons weigh i've got loads but they're not here i'd weigh them blah 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 future video but basically we've got a guy here and he's got a um an rd and rz this is a free uh, 350 rz piston right it's not the same this is a 125 but this piston weighs 203 grams i don't know how much a 125 piston weighs let's say 150 grams this is rings and piston without the wrist pin slash gudgeon pin whatever you want to call it right and without the rod oh that's the wrong fucking thing this is why this is awesome right this piss this this p rod is is heavy i haven't i've still got shit to take out of it we can still get skinny with its ass right it's made out of 7075 aluminium and this thing has a mass of 191 grams i'll let that sink in for a second this is the piston the rod right it hasn't got rings but this is the piston and the rod and the wrist pin no bearings right but the con rod the piston and the wrist pin the heavy easily the heaviest things in that reciprocating mass or half a rod but you get what i mean right this is all of it and it weighs that much and let's just say and this is what i am thinking about let's just say we want to try and get away with being funky which is what i really do want to i really do want to get funky with things um is it here or is it other no it's not non-metal it's your prick custom materials no it was zinc alloys, copper alloys, was it in there? No, aluminium alloys. I did have, or I thought I had. I thought I had other alloys. Magnesium, there we go, I don't know why I didn't see that. Right, if we make this out of magnesium, it's 116 grams. This is getting stupid, right? And you can make pistons and stuff out of magnesium. You just got to take other considerations in and galling and stuff. But then you can do coatings and so on and so forth. 
if we can get this thing down to a hundred grams, right? That is insane. I don't. <laughs> I can't understate. I know. I can't understate how insane that is. Right? If we can get this thing down to a hundred grams. Uh, pfft. <laughs> um, then all you really have to worry about then is resonance, right? That is on, on what your bearings can take, right? That's all you really have to worry about. And as everybody knows, if your engine is making the specified torque, right, then you're laughing, right? You're absolutely laughing. Especially if you can start fucking around with boost ports and stuff, which this has the ability to do, and I'll show you how they work. Um, you know, but again, it's all just fucking around. But that is, for me, that is the major draw. If I can get the weight of this P rod thing down to 100 grams and then 50 grams of seals, so the whole thing weighs. And the bearings, no, no, forget the bearings for a minute. That's part of your crank crankweight. Uh, if we can get that down, you know, people are saying about the thrusting forces of this thing flapping about. Um, well, looking at a piston with its piston and wrist pin and top one and a half of your con rod versus this, uh, it doesn't matter. It literally doesn't fucking matter. It does not matter whatsoever. One other thing that a lot of people don't realise as well is that you know i was talking about putting coatings possibly on this housing or something like that you don't you could just have this polished aluminium and put the coating on the actual rod itself and if the rod was this simple to manufacture you could literally this isn't an engine that's you know i'm trying, trying to change the world with it it's just spitballing but you could just have coated pistons and when the fuck you chuck them out and when you fucking just slam another one in and you know keep the housing pretty much intact you know, you just rub coatings because aluminium is actually a really good bearing surface, a good bearing material um, because of the oxide layer. And if you um, if you use electrolysis and basically you can anodize castings, not so they're pretty, but so they're hard, so they're fucking hard. <laughs> I can just be, see see people waiting for the uh the the clip any road there's loads more to do there's loads of I've, I've got experiments to do right there's experiments on this thing that i want to do i want to base i'm basically trying to set up um to have these rods made out of a couple of materials and have them tensile tested have um do a compression test with them so we can literally squash it and see how much force it takes to deform it uh, to break it stuff like that you know it, it, it's i'm not winging this right it's not winging this it's i'm trying to demonstrate because there's a lot of people out there think oh you just wing it until you get it right it's wastes so much time does winging it right it really does i haven't got much time full-time job trying to sort this workshop out and trying to keep the channel ticking on until we can get in the garage and do some stuff waiting for electrics stuff like that i'm sure people are that really that interested um, but yeah that's in the background i've got shit to do and i'm trying to show that winging it doesn't really get you anywhere you have to do calculations right if you want this thing you know to actually produce real power if you don't want it to explode all the time if you want it to do what you want it to do then you have to work this shit out you know what i mean and but that doesn't mean that if we build you know i build this run it it's not going to go pop right people make mistakes there are things that you don't think about uh interactions you don't think about mm. you know what i mean but regardless all i'm doing is is i'm trying to answer people's questions before they jump in and ask them or you know start fucking wigg wiggling that finger um it's all good fun at the end of the day and like i say if this explodes in dramatic uh, fashion that's awesome because it gives uh it, it you know i hate saying the word but it's content you know what i mean it's something to see it's something to learn from it's something to do hope that makes sense and i'll speed this up
Is it easy to speed up? Yeah, check that shit out. That's what we want, but times a billion. Do you go times ten? What's it? Oh, times five. Yeah! Where's that? Have we got the centre of mass? See? Makes this kind of like oval circle, which is amazingly easy to balance out. It's like, wow, that's amazingly easy to balance out. You, it's probably staying still with the refresh rate. <laughs> Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.